Hi, and thanks for joining us for this short video tutorial on using Bismuth Shields in CT. Bismuth Shields have been used traditionally in CT to shield radio sensitive organs such as the breast or the eyes. I'm going to be talking today a little bit about how to get the same effect without using a bismuth shield. So this first slide is um, the official AAPM position statement on using bismuth shields. Essentially what it says is that bismuth shields can reduce uh, the dose to the anterior organs. Um, however, there are a few disadvantages with this. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today is what are those disadvantages and what are some of the techniques uh, that exist that we can implement in our CT departments um, as an alternative to using bismuth shields. So if we have a number of x-rays that are impacting a shield, we will have fewer x-rays that exit the shield. The reason is, is because the shield will act to absorb and scatter, uh, attenuate the x-rays, therefore fewer x-rays will exit the shield. What this means for us in CT with bismuth shields is that our patients will receive a lower radiation dose because there will be fewer x-rays that will be impacting the patient. However, there's a separate control for this already built into a CT scanner called our mass. The mass is, is a uh, relationship of the number of x-rays that are impacting the patient. So instead of using a shield, which decreases the number of x-rays that are impacting the patient, we can do that directly through the mass, which also decreases the number of x-rays entering the patient. I wanna take a sidestep here and talk a little bit about tube current modulation, um, because this will become important a little bit later when we talk about some of the impacts that CT shields have in our departments. Tube current modulation is a way for a CT scanner to automatically adapt the mass according to the patient attenuation that is seen in the topogram and the desired image quality. So the topogram and the image quality reference settings are two parameters that tell the CT scanner how much should the mass uh, go up or how much should the mass go down. And this can happen angularly. So as the x-ray tube rotates around the patient, and it can also happen longitudinally, so as the patient moves into the scanner in the z-axis. The main point of tube current modulation is that larger patients and denser body parts are going to require more mass to obtain the same desired image quality. So if we have more attenuation in the beam, more attenuation uh, that is seen on the topogram, then the mass will have to go up. So if we're using um, bismuth shields and we're using tube current modulation, then there are two ways that we can apply the shield. We can apply the bismuth shield before the topogram and we can apply the bismuth shield after the topogram, depending on what we're doing in the department. So I wanna look at this scenario over here first. So if a bismuth shield is, the, uh, is applied before the topogram, what happens? Essentially what happens is the automatic exposure control system will adjust the tube current to account for the shield that is seen in the topogram. So what this means is that the tube current is gonna go up um, to account for that extra attenuation that's seen by the shield. So what's the outcome? Well, the outcome is that the anterior organs, they're gonna receive the same dose had the shield not ever been placed in the first place. So the rest of the body will receive a higher dose because the mass has been increased. This doesn't sound like a very good option. So what happens if we apply a bismuth shield after the topogram? Well, if we apply the bismuth shield after the topogram, the AEC will not be adjusted um, based on the, on the tube current and what is seen in the topogram um, for most scanners. Some scanners can change this on the fly, but let's just assume for, for these purposes that, that it isn't changed. What the outcome is, is that the dosers, doses will be lower to the anterior organs. That's good, that's what we're trying to do. However, the image quality is gonna be degraded. And it's gonna be degraded because there are fewer x-rays um, that are contributing to image formation because they're being absorbed in the shield. That's bad. So 
we're going to have a decrease in our image quality. So this doesn't sound like a very good option either. So we have two, two options here and neither sound that great. What are some other consequences that we have from using CT shields? Well, the first is that shields can cause beam hardening artifact, artifacts. What this is is an increase in the CT numbers, so the CT numbers are no longer accurate. The CT number or the Hounsfield units are a representation of what the attenuation is uh, within the image. So those become inaccurate. The other problem that we have is we have this scenario where we have a wasted radiation dose. This occurs mostly in the posterior projection, although it also happens um, partially in the lateral projections, where x-rays that would have contributed to the image formation are totally absorbed. So if we look at the graphic over here, we have is x-rays in the posterior projection. We have our detectors up here that would detect um, x-rays as they're escaping the patient. If we put a shield in the way, those x-rays go away and they're blocked. So the x-rays that are coming through the patient posteriorly and exiting the patient anteriorly that would have contributed to image formation are now absorbed by the shield. So this is wasted radiation dose. The patient received radiation when they uh, the radiation that they received didn't do anything to enhance the image quality. So what are some things that you can do besides using bismuth shields? Well, the same effect can be achieved by reducing the mass. Because the mass is a direct control of the number of x-rays that are exiting the x-ray tube, we can just control the mass. That's basically what the shield is, is doing anyway. The shield is reducing the number of x-rays that are hitting the patient. So why not just do it on the front end and then reduce the dose to the entire patient? So not only do we, can we reduce the dose to the surface um, organs, the anterior organs, but we can also reduce the dose to the entire patient. Other benefits are you don't need to mess around with the shields. You don't have to worry about placing them on the patient. You don't have to worry about cleaning them between patients which helps with workflow in the department. You don't have to worry about artifacts and you can maintain your CT number accuracy. So while shields are coming from the uh, place of trying to do the right thing for the patient, there are other ways to achieve the same effect without having to sacrifice image quality or um, other issues with radiation dose. So thanks for watching this short video tutorial on using bismuth shields in CT. Remember to visit us at www.radtrainingassociates.com and check out some of the other resources we have there.